So moving right along, we are going to start discussing the point-to-point -point protocol, or PPP. Now we talked a little bit about PPP in the ICND1 course. We told you what it was and showed you how to enable it, which took exactly one line of configuration to do so. In this video, since it's a more advanced course, we will actually go a little more in-depth. Imagine that. The point-to-point -point protocol has been in use for decades. It's been in use since at least the mid-80s. That's when I started messing around with computers and remember dial-up internet using the serial line IP or the slip protocol and PPP, the point-to-point -point protocol. And it's not outdated by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's still used on some DSL connections today. If you'll recall PPPoE, that's the point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet. And your DSL router or modem or what have you will actually use the point-to-point -point protocol to connect to your DSL provider. Now, PPP is a Layer 2 protocol that can encapsulate multiple Layer 3 protocols, IP, IPX, Apple Talk, SNA, what have you. So long as it supports PPP, you can run it over any PPP link. This is accomplished using a Link Control Protocol, or LCP. And you'll see when we get in the lab that we have LCP IP, Link Control Protocol for IP. We have LCP IPX for Link Control Protocol IPX. Of course, we won't be running IPX in our lab, but you get the idea. Now, the link control protocol has several features that can help a network administrator have a good functioning network. They are authentication, error detection, multi-link, and loop detection. And we'll talk briefly about all four of those over the next few slides. First, we'll start off with authentication. Authentication allows routers to ensure that they know who they're talking to on the other end of the link. Now, authentication is useful on dial-on-demand connections. For example, if you have an ISDN router that dials into a central hub, you'll obviously want to make sure that the router you think is dialing you up is actually the router that's dialing you up. To be honest, authentication is not used that much on a point-to-point -point link because you kind of have control over what's plugged into each end of the link, but we will show you the commands in the lab to set it up just for completeness sake. Authentication can be configured in just one direction, i.e., I dial you up and I provide a username and password and you authenticate it. But when authentication is set up on a dedicated link, it's usually configured both directions. That way you authenticate both ends of the connection before you start sending potentially sensitive data across the link. There are two methods of authentication, PAP and CHAP. Now, PAP is the Password Authentication Protocol, and it's an older method of authentication that's rarely used today. CHAP is the Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. It's the preferred authentication method as it offers encryption. We've got another video just on PPP authentication. We'll get a little more in depth with the differences between PAP and CHAP in that video. So now let's talk about error detection. PPP adds a frame check sequence, or FCS, to each PPP frame that's sent across the link. You can think of this as an FCS on an Ethernet frame. Basically, if the frame gets to the other end of the link and the FCS as calculated on the other end is different than the FCS that's included in the frame, then you know that the packet was damaged in transit. PPP also uses a feature called LQM to determine the percentage of packets that have errors. Basically, the PPP link looks at how many packets were received versus how many were error-free or have errors in them, to be more specific, and calculates a percentage based upon that. You can configure PPP to take down a link if the error percentage goes too high. And again, this is more useful on dial-up connections where you could have noise on the line or you could have a bad phone switch somewhere in between you and the other end of the link. But it can also be used just as well on a dedicated circuit because you know those never have errors on them, he said sarcastically. However, LQM taking down a link is really only useful if you have a redundant path. If you have one link between you and your branch office, even if that link is running at 50% errors, at least you're getting data across it. Whereas if LQM takes down the link, then you've just lost all communications. Next, we'll move on to multi-link. PPP allows you to do Layer 2 load balancing. This differs from the Layer 3 load balancing. If you do Layer 3 load balancing, You'll notice in the routing table, and you did whenever we did our routing lab, that Layer 3 load balancing gives you multiple routes to the same network. Layer 2 load balancing is more akin to an Ether channel trunk, and it presents a single interface to the router to route the packets down. PPP, being a Layer 2 protocol, is much more efficient at load balancing than IP. IP, if it load balances across two equal cost links, will actually send all of one conversation down one link and all of another conversation down another link. 
if you have a lot of voice calls that take up an inordinate amount of bandwidth, then you could have one link completely clogged up and hardly able to process traffic, and the second one unused or virtually unused. With PPP, that load balancing is actually done at layer two, and so it switches individual frames down each link and reassembles them on the other end. This has the net effect of giving you smaller route tables where you have multiple PPP links between routers. And finally, we'll talk about loop detection. Loop detection in PPP is pretty simple. LCP sends a randomized magic number in the LCP header. That magic number might be 42, for all we know. Basically, if LCP sees its own magic number come back to it, then it knows that the telco has put that line in a loop and can flag that particular interface as being looped and shut it down or send an alert to the administrator or whatever number of configured options you have set up. And that, my friends, concludes our overview of the point-to-point -point protocol.